Hello everyone, Stepan here. I'll continue the video on the French defense theory with the Rubinstein variation, which is, I would say, not the most fighting way for, for Black to play the French defense. And it arises from the classical French or the Paulsen French. Let me just get to this position. So e4, e6, the French defense, d4, d5, and knight to c3. This is the classical uh, reply to the French defense. And the most common move here is bishop to, uh, uh, is bishop to b4, which would be the winner. Uh, knight to f6 would lead either to the burn variation with bishop to g5 or or the Steinitz variation with pawn to e5. But the move we are going to go over today after knight to c3 isn't knight to f6, isn't the win over with bishop to, to b4. It's d takes e4, the Rubinstein variation of the French defense. And this position is uh, quite simplified compared to other variations, same as the exchange variation of the French, and it uh, reduces the central pawn tension, which is the, often the, the theme of, of the French defense. And if you remember the video I've made on the basics, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with the basics of the French defense, I will link it in the description below so you can check it out. In that video, I've covered all the basic ideas and plans for both sides, as well as all the common variations uh, uh, in short, so usually in the French defense you will have a, a locked pawn structure with the, the black pawn on d5, with the white pawn usually on e5, and black is going to aim for the break c5 and f6, and white is going to attack on the king side. And with the move d takes e4 with the Rubinstein variation, black is already resolving a lot of those issues. And he will most often not have a problematic bishop on c8, which is a common uh, problem for black in, in the French defense. So now already you can see that black could either fianchetto to the bishop, black could play bishop to, d, uh, to d7, bishop to c6. So the bishop has a lot more scope. And uh, there's only one reply to this move, of course. I'm just going to show you one sideline, which uh, isn't good, but it might be used as a su surprise weapon. Sometimes I, I I would never play it with white, and that's the move f3, uh, not taking the pawn. Of course, the main move is knight takes e4. So after f3, if you are black, you are simply going to take this and be a pawn up. And the position which arises from this is simply better for black a pawn up, and white doesn't have almost any compensation and definitely uh, no initiative for that. Of course, black's uh, black's bishops are worse than white's bishops. But that doesn't mean almost anything at this, at this stage. So after the move, uh, knight to c3, d takes e4, white uh, has to take the pawn. So knight takes e4. And this is, let's say, the starting position of the Rubinstein. And there are three ways black could play this, uh, black could play this position. The first, uh, the first way is the Blackburn defense uh, with the move knight to d7. And after knight to d7, uh, what black is trying to do is simply develop his g8 knight to the f6 square and have a reinforcement for, for that. So after knight to f6, knight takes f6, knight takes f6, and black has developed uh, his bad knight from, from b8 and has a lot, uh, a lot of central control. So the Blackburn defense is, I would say, the most common way uh, that... Uh, that black will continue the Rubinstein. Now the positions which arise uh, after white plays his most common move, knight to f3, knight g to f6. Uh, in this position, uh, white of course has to take. If you remember the Karpov variation of the Karo Khan, uh, the position is uh, similar, except that the pawn is on c6. And of course, if white doesn't take this this knight, then any other move will be a tempo gain uh, because the knight has to be defended. So let's say in the Karokan, in the Karpo variation, white often makes the mistake of playing bishop to d3. But now after knight takes e4, bishop e4, knight to f6, the bishop uh, is a tempo gain and it has to move once more and black is virtually a tempo up. So after this, white has to take knight takes f6, knight takes f6, which is the point of knight to d7. Now bishop to d3 and both sides will develop, will develop normally except uh, that black has to react in this position and use the fact that he can push c5 and open up the position and same as in the Karokan once again the Karpo variation and a few others if you are black in a position like this you have to push c5 and of course uh, uh, the advantage of the French to the Karokan is that c6 hadn't been played yet so in this position you are actually playing c5 in one move and in the Karokan after c6 and c5 you virtually lost a tempo however in the Karokan you get to do something else but that's uh, that's another story so in this position black has to push c5 uh, to get uh, to get more space in the center and uh, 
and strengthen his own central control. So c5, the best move for white by far is c takes d5, uh, d takes c5, I'm sorry, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, now both sides will castle, and you can see that there really aren't any problems for either side, and the, the position is fairly balanced. The only problem black has, uh, you could say, is the bishop on c8, but most commonly uh, the bishop is going to go to b7 after b6, and I think black has... Uh, a lot of practical chances in the attack in this opening. So bishop to g5 is the best move, pinning the knight for white. b6, queen to e2, now bishop to b7, and this is the starting position of the Blackburn. And in most of your games you are going to get this. Now, if you ask the engines, this position is almost completely equal. It's 0.2 for white, so that doesn't really mean anything. The fact remains that uh, white has a slightly better kingside control because of the pin he was able to perform with the bishop, and that the queen is slightly misplaced, but that doesn't really mean anything. Now, uh, a fairly common idea here is rook a to d1, uh, gaining a tempo on the queen virtually. The queen will have to move, and e7 is not a good square, even though it loses, uh, it ruins the pawn structure. So the best move here is queen to c7, and white is uh, best advised to take. So bishop f6, g to f6, black has a ruined pawn structure, but he has the g-file to work with, and of course he will have a uh, a lot more ideas in the attack along the g-file and on the other hand white has relinquished his bishop pair so uh, black has a significant advantage in the attack however in any end game white is going to be slightly better and this position is now all zeros believe it or not and this is all theory still so usually the position continues with bishop to e4 trying to exchange one bishop so if your opponent has the bishop pair and you get rid of one bishop then he doesn't have the bishop pair anymore so rook f to d8 bishop takes queen takes and this is where uh, I'd like to stop with this variation, because from now on uh, you get to choose uh, a lot of options. White gets to choose from a lot of options. But remember as black that this issue of doubling your pawns along the f-file isn't such a big problem. And if you are white, remember that if you, if you reach this position, g takes f6, you should most probably aim to exchange the bishop pair, and you should play a move such as bishop to e4. And what's uh, why I mentioned at the start of the video that the Rubinstein is a pretty equal variation and not such a fighting way for black to play the French, is because this position tends to end in a draw uh, most often, and you can see why, actually. And neither side has a clear attacking plan, and neither side has a clear advantage. So, okay, that was it for the Blackburn defense. So, knight to d7 on move 4, the most common reply. After knight takes e4, uh, the second most common line uh, black could go for, and this is, I think, the best one, even though uh, engine-wise it gives uh, white an edge, a clear edge, in fact, is bishop to d7. And this is now going to enter the Fort Knox variation. Here, white uh, is almost forced to play knight to f3. This is the best move. And after knight, uh, after bishop to c6, this is the Fort Knox. And if you turn on the engine now, white is white has about z uh, 0.7 or 0.6 advantage, but black has managed to resolve his main uh, main issue in the position. That's the light squared bishop, and he has a great attacking position. Now, of course, uh, the knight is hanging first of all, so bishop to d3, knight to d7, continuing the same plan with knight to f6, and after knight takes knight takes, so no castles, knight g to f6, and in this position, uh, white shouldn't really be taking this knight. It's much better to solidify the position with knight to g3. And this is the main move. Of course, uh, white could take, it's nothing It's nothing critical, he isn't losing, but uh, theoretically um, it's considered the best to, to play the knight to g3. And not, uh, not allow black uh, to develop this knight, which isn't really that useful on d7 anymore. And the knight would most probably uh, in this position like to be on a, move, on a square such as d5. So don't take the knight, play knight to g3. Now bishop to e7 is the main move trying to castle, rook e1 castles, c3 solidifying the position, rook to e8, and this position, believe it or not, is already plus one for white, but it's still, well, it's not theory, I perhaps went a bit too far, but I don't see such a clear problem in black's position, and I think that uh, black has great chances here, uh, even, though, even though the engines will, will tell you that the position is better for white, this is a common thing in the opening, such as the Karo Khan or... Uh, or the King's Indian defense and in some variations of the French as well, that the engines are pretty subjective and the engines like space, the engines like peace activity, but this position gives black perfectly uh, good chances uh, to attack. So this is the Fort Knox. Now, um, 
You could play differently, of course, if you were black after bishop to c6. Uh, and you could try something different after, let's say, the move bishop to d3. You, can't, you don't have to play knight to d7, uh, of course, but knight to d7 is by far the most common move. There's a move that, that has been played over 150 times, and that, that's bishop takes e4. And now after bishop takes e4, you play c6. And now you have the Karo Khan by transposition, but you are a tempo down. And you can see that white has two pieces developed. Black has uh, no pieces developed, but you are going to play knight to d7. You're going to play knight to f6, gain a tempo on the bishop, knight to b6, then knight to d5. Uh, if white pushes c4, you should generally be happy because the d4 pawn is going to be weak. So this is a, this is a fairly good plan and perhaps a great surprise weapon. The the highest rated game in this variation with bishop takes uh, with bishop takes e4 was Ivan Sharic against Horvat in 2014. And if you don't know, Ivan Sharic is the best Croatian grandmaster, but it's irrelevant for, for this subject, but you should know that uh, you can use the move uh, bishop takes e4 as a great surprise weapon on move 6. So after bishop, bishop to d3, you can take, and this will surely su surprise white. And if you are familiar with the theory in the Karo Khan, uh, this will be a comfortable position to play. But let's go back to the main line. So after knight to d7, uh, castles, bishop to e7, you could listen to the engines here, and after... How, let's say after after this move after knight to knight to g3 you don't have to play bishop to e7 even though it's the best move you could try the move h6 you could try the move g6 you could fianchetto with a dark squared bishop but i think bishop to e7 is the most sensible move and in this position you could try b6 uh, instead of castling this is this is supposed to be a good move and after b6 you are simply solidifying the positioning of your bishop but you can see that um, as opposed to many variations of the french defense you have resolved uh, the the issue of the c8 bishop and whatever happens you are not playing a piece down, and that's, I would say, the most important thing. And if you are able to do that in the French defense, you should uh, try it. Okay, so that's the Fort Knox, uh, the Fort Knox variation of the Rubinstein. After d takes e4, knight takes e4, another uh, line that black could go for is the simple uh, continuation of the Rubinstein, the classical way it used to be played. This is not the most common line today, and that's knight to f6. And knight to f6 is... Uh, Preparing to recapture with the queen, not waiting for knight to d7 to be able to recapture with the knight. So white is best advised to take. Knight takes f6, queen takes f6, and this is now the classical Rubinstein variation of the of the French. And you can see that uh, the, the the development is equal, uh, let's say, and uh, the position is equal as well. White is supposed to have a slight edge because the queen is supposed to be misplaced, and after a move such as knight to f3. At bishop to g5, uh, white could gain a, a slight edge and have a more solid position, but it doesn't really mean that much. In this position, you play h6 to prevent that plan. Bishop to d3, bishop d6, castles. Black is going to castle now, and you can see that the position is perfectly playable. And in this line, in the Rubinstein, you are going to play b6, bishop to b7, and pressure the, the g2 pawn. So... I would say that uh, the positions arising from the from the Rubinstein are playable for for black and they are solid for black. But if you are looking to attack your your opponents fairly on, you should choose the win over French or not even go uh, for the for the normal variations. You should uh, you should just play something more aggressive. Win the win over would be uh, would be your best choice. But if you decide to play the Rubinstein with uh, after knight to c3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, remember that you have three options. The main option is the Blackburn with knight to d7, Fort Knox with bishop to d7, or continuing the Rubinstein with knight to f6. Once again, uh, if you want more information on the basics of the French on the first couple of moves and an intro on every single uh, variation and common sideline, you can watch the video I have linked below. I will also link the other variations I have made detailed videos on, the exchange variation, the Taras variation and the winover French. Okay, everybody, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something from this video. I hope you got to learn something about the Rubinstein French and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.